Hi everyone, my name is Damien, and this video is about how I turned Lego's bucket wheel excavator into this. A fully capable drilling, crawling, and dirt extracting tunnel boring machine. Now I'm going to talk about all the features of the tunnel boring machine throughout this video. But first I want to start with a little inspiration. So the year was 2017 and I had finished building the bucket wheel excavator the year prior. And the bucket wheel excavator is one of these huge sets from Lego. Lots of pieces, about 3,900, huge instruction booklet. And I said to myself, it'd be great to rebuild it into something new. Now Lego does provide a second model you can build with the bucket wheel excavator. And that model was not as, not as exciting as I had hoped it to be. And more importantly, it didn't use the cool new piece that Lego introduced for the bucket wheel excavator. And that's these guys, these ring racks or like big ring gears. The way these work is you assemble four of them together and they form a circle. And you can put a small gear on the inside to drive it around. And this is how the bucket wheel of the bucket wheel excavator works. Uh, the buckets are just attached to the outside and this guy is just driven round and round extracting dirt. So I wanted to use this as a central part of my new model. And after a few days of thinking, the tunnel boring machine idea was formed. The third model of the bucket wheel excavator. Tunnel boring machines, or TBMs for short, are impressive machines that we've been using for over a century to dig tunnels underground where it would otherwise be impossible. We've been using them to dig tunnels for things like subways and trains and even sewers. Modern TBMs have a bunch of different subsystems, but they can be broken down into three main ones. The first one is the cutter head. It's at the front of the machine. That's what's cutting through the earth, creating that tunnel. Right behind the cutter head is the second one the thrust system. The thrust system is used to push the cutter head against the earth, against the rock, and steer it into the, in the correct direction. Finally, you have all the support systems that trail behind. I'm gonna show you all these different subsystems and how I implemented them in my Lego TBM. First, to the business end of the machine, the cutter head. The cutter head is where I started this model and it's where I spent the most time. It needed to be perfect. It needed to look the part and it needed to be functional. So I put four buckets from the bucket wheel excavator within the ring itself. And those buckets, like in the bucket wheel excavator, the Lego dirt is collected and it's fed into the machine and extracted at the end. And for this design, the way it works as the buckets go across or move past the 12 o'clock position at the top, the dirt within the buckets is dumped onto a small ramp, which leads down to the conveyor belt within the machine itself. And the conveyor belt then brings it all the way to the end. And into the dump truck. Next is the thrust system. For this, I used the two linear actuators that came with the bucket wheel excavator and I placed one on each side of the cutter head. As the linear actuators extend, the cutter head is pushed forward into the dirt. Once they're fully extended, then I reverse the direction on the linear actuators and they start retracting. But at the same time, I'm also engaging the wheels of the main body and the body inches forward at the same rate the linear actuators retract. When this is happening, the cutter head is stationary and the whole machine is moving forward like an inchworm. The final piece of my Lego TBM is the support systems. 
The support systems consist of a main motor, which drives everything, just like in the bucket wheel excavator, a gearbox, which allows you to control the cutter head, the conveyor belt, and the linear actuators, which inch the machine along, and the conveyor belt. The conveyor belt is actually attached to the cutter head itself. So when inching forward, the conveyor belt and cutter head move as one, and then the body moves around it. The main purpose of the conveyor belt is to extract the dirt from the cutter head all the way into the dump truck. The conveyor belt also powers a small additional conveyor belt on the dump truck itself. Speaking of which, the dump truck is something I wasn't really excited about building when I had finished building the TBM. So I did the tunnel boring machine first, and at the end of it, I said, you know what, it really needs a dump truck, just like the bucket wheel excavator had, but I didn't really want to build it. However, now that it's built, I actually am a huge fan of it. I think it looks really cool. It has a low profile design. It's got this little racing look to it with a cab low to the ground, which is kind of appropriate for something that's meant to be small and going into tunnels. It has this conveyor belt at the back, which connects with the TBM and, and the TBM drives it. That little conveyor belt is used to draw the dirt up into the main bucket of the dump truck. And this is another cool feature, I think, that made this build satisfying. It's how it dumps. It doesn't dump like a normal dump truck, it dumps sideways. And it has this very satisfying lever to make it happen. I'm going to end this video by showing you three cool techniques that I used to build this Lego TBM using only the pieces that I had available to me from the bucket wheel excavator. First up is the drive for the drive wheels. Now, in order to get the drive to work properly, I needed the body of the TBM to move forward at the same rate that the linear actuators were retracting so that the cutter head doesn't move anywhere while we inch forward. In order, in order to do that, I need the wheels to rotate really slowly. Now, despite the bucket wheel excavator having loads of pieces, it actually doesn't have many small gears and large gears. And you needed both of those to build a large step down gearbox. So I had to be a bit creative and I ended up using two of the turntables as big gears. With those two big gears out of the turntables, I was able to calculate a ratio necessary so that the body moves at the same rate as the linear actuators. And I was able to do this within 2%, which is pretty good. So that means whenever the linear actuators move their full movement of 41 millimeters, the body actually moves 41.8 millimeters. So pretty close. The second design feature I want to highlight is how the cutter head is actually driven. Now, in Lego's original bucket wheel excavator, there was a known problem or comment about how smoothly the bucket wheel actually rotated. Being its main feature, people were really stuck on it. And it turns out it didn't rotate that smoothly. And that's because of a small imperfection in these large ring gears these large ring racks. When two pieces connect, there's a small imperfection. And when the driving gear that's rolling around the inside rolled over the, the interconnection, the bucket wheel excavator would lurch a bit. And this is something I wanted to fix with my TBM because it really bothered me at the time. So I started by putting two gears because two must be better than one. And, but I put the second gear exactly on the opposite side. And that didn't fix the problem because as the ring rotated around, both gears would cross that imperfection at the same time. So I kept throwing gears at the problem. So I added a third driving gear. This third driving gear was 30 degrees offset from the first two. And with this third gear, the lurching problem was solved. And the, the cutter head of this TBM rotates very smoothly. 
The final design feature of this TBM that I'd like to talk about is how I designed the gearbox to transfer power between two things that are moving apart and back together again linearly. As far as I know, there's no other model that does this. A lot of LEGO models transfer power through an angular joint or through a turntable. But I don't think I've come across any that transfer power linearly. And the way I did that was by using a worm gear as part of the gearbox. As anyone knows who's used the worm gear before, they slide really easily on axles. And ever since I was a kid using these worm gears, I've wanted to use this property somehow to my advantage. And this TBM does just that. The way it works is that the main power from the motor is transferred uh, through the gear, this main gearbox and into the worm gear. And this worm gear engages a small eight tooth gear on the cutter head. As the linear actuators extend, this axle is pulled through the worm gear and uh, transfers power to the cutter head. This gearbox is transferring power to drive the cutter head and driving the conveyor belt underneath because the conveyor belt in this model is attached to the cutter head itself. Well, that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this tour of my Lego tunnel boring machine. And remember, if you have the bucket wheel excavator, you have all the pieces you need to make this model. I used over 80% of the pieces from the bucket wheel excavator in this Lego TBM, so about 3,200. However, I haven't written a manual yet, and I wouldn't hold your breath on that. It's taken me over four years to put together a video just talking about the Lego TBM. It might take me a few years more to make a manual. Thanks for watching.